Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today's topic is for BSc Nursing second year. The topic is fever and its management. Let's start the class. We'll begin from the definition of body temperature. Body temperature is the degree of hotness or coolness of a body. It is somatic sensation, that is a cellular sensation of heat or cold and also known as degree of intensity of heat of the body in relation to outside, external environment. And here is a formula. This formula is about body temperature. So, overall body temperature is thermogenesis minus heat loss from the body, that is to calculate body temperature, we actually calculate thermogenesis, heat production inside the body minus heat loss from the body. So, heat production minus heat loss is body temperature, normal body temperature. Now, we have types of temperature. Before discussing about fever, we need to know everything about body temperature. So, it is types of temperature. First is core temperature. Core means central. This is the temperature of inside part of the body. Inside part means internal tissue, blood vessels, skin, inside the skin and subcutaneous tissue. The site where we can measure core temperatures are rectum, tympanic membrane and oral cavity. Next is surface temperature. This is the temperature of external body tissues at the surface of the skin. That is above the subcutaneous tissue, surface of the skin. Physiology of thermoregulation. How is heat production regulated in our body? Because there is a continuous heat production along with continuous heat loss. So there is a physiology, continuity of thermoregulation inside our body. Thermoregulations introduction. First of all, it is a continuous maintenance of body temperature through natural process. And it can be regulated. Though it is a natural process, we can contribute in regulating the body temperature, that is, regulating the thermoregulation by various mechanisms. While learning, we will learn about natural as well as how we can contribute. First of all is nervous system control. Nervous system uh, centrally controls all the sensations of the body. One of those sensations is heat production, heat loss, those things. So nervous system, basically hypothalamus, which is almost at the center of nervous system that controls the body temperature, that controls thermogenesis, also controls heat loss from the body. Next is vascular control. Vascular is related to blood vessels. Inside blood vessels, there is a continuous exchange of numerous things like electrolyte, nutrition, oxygen, blood components. During that exchange, there is heat production. And to control that heat production, blood vessels contribute in that controlling. So, temperature is regulated through vascular control. Skin. Skin also contributes in the maintenance of body temperature because skin has a subcutaneous tissue that helps to exchange the heat outside and heat gaining inside. Next is behavioral control. This is our contribution. Now, as much as we perform daily activities, we keep ourselves busy, we reduce our stress and anxiety. This way we can help in help our body in maintaining temperature. During the time of stress or anxiety, if we think during the time of stress and anxiety, we feel more heat inside our body. We feel like we are burning from inside during the time of stress and anxiety. That burning feeling is excess heat production. So, behavioral control also helps in physiology of thermoregulation. 
Next topic is factors affecting body temperature. Body temperature can be influenced by numerous factors. They are first of all age. Talking about age, children and old age people tend to have less temperature, less poor and surface temperature than adults. Maybe because of metabolism, maybe because of body activities and because of immunity. Next is exercise. The more we perform physical activity, the more balanced our thermal regulation becomes. So exercise influences our body temperature. Next is hormonal level. Hormones are like the engines of our body. The more it is produced, used, the more our body functions properly. So if there is any disturbance in hormonal level, hormone is produced excess than normal or less than normal, then our body temperature can get influenced. We can get fever or hypothermia. Next is stress. During stress, our body temperature suddenly rises, rises than normal because there is excess thermogenesis and normal heat loss. So body temperature rises. Next is circadian rhythm. Circadian rhythm is related to sleep weight cycle, hormonal cycle, biological clock. So let me explain it from sleep weight cycle pattern. The more we get enough sleep, enough according to our age, enough according to our disease condition, then our body's temperature remains balanced. The more we neglect the rest, take less rest than we have required, then our body temperature might rise or fall than normal. Next is environment. Environment can be related to climate, atmospheric pressure. If we suddenly get exposed to a new kind of climate, new kind of environment, then our body temperature takes time to adjust with that environment. Our body takes a while to become adjusted with that climate. So at that time, body temperature might be slightly disbalanced than normal. These are the factors affecting body temperature. Let's move further. Now fever. Introduction to fever. Fever is the condition where there is elevation of body temperature above the normal range. That is a result of alteration, changes in body physiology, body functions. Normal body temperature is about 37 degrees Celsius and 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. It can be slightly different in different books. You can consider any one book and while you write normal body temperature, don't forget to write the author's name. So when body temperature rises above the normal, we call that condition as Fever. There can be many causes of fever, but I've listed a few. I'll explain one by one. First cause can be infection. When any external antigen, any external microorganism enter our body, either that is virus or bacteria or any other microorganism, then it enters our body cells, tries to invade the blood vessel and grow and multiply there by taking nutrition from the body, by taking favorable condition from the body. So, our body acts as a defense and gives us a symptom. It gives us a symptom that there is something wrong going with the body and we need treatment. Thus, that symptom given by the body is infection. And it gives the symptom in the form of fever. How do we know that our body has infection? Body gives a symbol, a symptom sign by showing a rise in temperature. So that is how infection is the main cause of fever. Next is neurogenic factors. Whenever there is an injury to hypothalamus or pituitary gland, there is a trauma or injury then body temperature 
can be disbalanced because they are the organ hypothalamus pituitary gland who regulate body temperature centrally so any injury to them any neurogenic factors can cause in fever next is hemorrhage bleeding from internal body cells internal body tissues is hemorrhage when there is blood loss from the body either internally or externally what happens is body starts a defense mechanism and wbc components reach to, towards that place so that they can stop the bleeding stop the hemorrhage due to that pressure of blood flow so that wbc can reach on time body temperature can slightly rise then fever can occur at that time fever can occur next is environment when the temperature of surrounding exceeds than it was yesterday or it was some days ago when temperature slightly exceeds then our body takes time to adapt with that changing environment the process of changing adapting with that changed environment can lead us to fever next is excessive exercise during exercise during mild or moderate any kind of exercise there is continuous heat production inside our body heat production and heat loss also because of movement of the muscles so if we do excessive exercise every day there is excessive thermogenesis so our temperature might become slightly irregular and that may cause fever next is side effect of drugs more than drugs this is about component of the drug some component of drug any kind of drug uh, if there is thyroid medication medication for hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism or drugs that contain dexedrine ritalin increases the body temperature why it increases because after we consume the drug that drug absorbs inside our body it gets absorbed and metabolized during that process normal temperature slightly exceeds then its normal level so that drug can be absorbed properly next is chemical substances chemical substances like caffeine and cocaine if we consume chemical substances like these while absorbing like i said earlier whatever we consume get absorbs and then metabolize inside our body when these things are absorbed then our body temperature slightly rises than normal while absorbing next is classification of fever fever as a classification range first is intermittent fever intermittent fever is normally seen during disease like septicemia in intermittent fever temperature comes down to normal at least one time a day but it rises it comes down to normal but normally it rises and there is a prevalence that in intermittent fever temperature normally rises during night and come back comes back to normal during day time remittent fever seen in viral fever bacterial fever or fever during tuberculosis in remittent the fever rises and falls but does not return to normal like intermittent it rises falls changes but does not come to normal fluctuates but no coming back to normal sustained fever sustaining continuing so in sustained fever fever is continuously body temperature is rising above the normal and that remains continuous at that rate does not come back to normal that needs treatment to come back to normal example can be during typhoid during pneumonia next is relapsing fever relapsing is a recurring so there is discontinuous periods of temperature febrile periods of temperature with acceptable temperature values that temperature values does not do so much harm to the patient temperature rises but also comes down to normal sometime example fever during malaria 
Next is range of fever. There are three ranges of fever, low grade, high grade and hyperpyrexia. In low grade fever, the temperature ranges between 98.8 to 100.6 degree Fahrenheit. If degree Celsius, it is 37 to 1 to 38 point. In high grade fever, temperature ranges from 100.6 to 104.9 degree Fahrenheit. And in hyperpyrexia, temperature is above 104.9 degree Fahrenheit. These are the ranges of fever from lower to higher. And then hyperpyrexia. Now hypothermia. Hypothermia can be introduced as less than normal body temperature. When temperature continuously is less than normal, that condition is called as hypothermia. Normal range for hypothermia. If hypothermia is there, it's still a normal range. It is 96 to 100 degree Fahrenheit. That is a normal range of body temperature. And then now, if hypothermia occurs, mild hypothermia, 90 to 95 degree Fahrenheit will be the temperature. Similarly, in severe hypothermia, less than 90 degree Fahrenheit is the temperature. Clinical features of fever can be flushed face. Face looks like red or sometimes white. Flushed face. And then hot and dry skin or sometimes there is, there is pale and cold skin. When there is change in the range of body temperature, even if there is fever, fever is coming to normal, again uh, raising above the normal, again coming back to normal. Or even if it is not coming to normal, it is ranging from one temperature to another. So there is hot and dry skin sometimes or sometimes pale and cold skin. Next is tachycardia, abnormal rising of heartbeat and tachypnea, abnormal rising of respiration rate and depth of breathing. Next is anorexia, there is no appetite to have food during fever. Next is headache, during fever there might be mild headache. And next is nausea and vomiting. Again, there might be body ache and fatigue. Body ache because of pain, homogenesis dysregulation and fatigue. Patient gets tired easily even after working for a less time. And there is scanty urine. Scanty urine is found in oliguria. This is the same symptom that is seen in fever, where urine output is in any age group, especially in adults, not in any age group, especially in adults, urine output is less than 400 ml in 24 hours in one day. Next is diagnostic test for fever. Diagnosing fever is very easy um, by using a thermometer, but still there are other symptoms that need to be identified to find out the etiology of that fever. First of all, let's start from history. History about recent infection because fever is caused because of infection and recent traveling. Recent traveling might expose one patient into two different climates. So, taking history about recent traveling is important and recent infection. Diagnosis can be done through inspection of body surface. There is dryness, dehydration, and change in skin color during fever. So, while examining the body, physical examination, diagnosis can be done through inspection of body surface. And also, we, if you want to mention uh, about thermometer, you can mention it here uh, in second point about thermometer. We can, every hour, we can monitor and record the body temperature so that we can measure the body temperature, also monitor the body temperature, the range in which it is changing. Other signs and symptoms can be assessed like anorexia, what is the reason for anorexia, fatigue, how long can the patient work and become tired? If he doesn't have fever, if he has only mild fever or doesn't have fever, if there is fever, then patient cannot work for a short, even for a short while. Next is scanty urine. Urine test can be done. Also, blood hematocrit values, blood component values can be obtained so that treatment can be done correctly. If we obtain blood hematocrit values, we can know what is the level of RBC, WBC, platelets. 
and according to that we can start our treatment next is medical management for fever first medical management can be antibiotics as fever caused by infection is found more so administration of correct antibiotic after finding out which microorganism has caused the fever correct kind of antibiotics can be administered to the patient next is administration of paracetamol to reduce the increased temperature of body paracetamol helps to reduce the body temperature for pain management nsaids non steroidal anti inflammatory drug can be provided next is glucocorticoid can also be provided as it is a potent antipyretic that inhibits pge2 synthesis prostaglandin synthesis so glucocorticoid can also be provided if there is hyperpyrexia for a prolonged time now we come to nursing management there can be many nursing management but some of them are prioritized during fever patient has nutritional disbalance so providing adequate nutrition and fulfilling the adequate amount of fluid can help the patient meet the increased metabolic demands of the body also prevent dehydration in the body increased metabolic demands because there is excess thermogenesis dehydration because skin and other body parts have become dry and body needs fluid during the time of fever physical activity should be reduced to limit and heat production especially during flush stage if patient is forced to perform physical activity then patient can suffer from severe kind of fever so physical activity should be reduced so that patient can get rest body can get rest and temperature can come back to normal especially during the flush stage flushing was there in sign and symptoms so especially during that flush stage patient should not be allowed to do any kind of physical activity next is cold sponging this is a uh, more of a home based management cold sponging is done by taking a bowl of cold water taking a clean handkerchief we dip the handkerchief in the water we squeeze the handkerchief properly and put keep it in a forehead of the patient 1 to 2 minute and then we can remove again dip it in the water cold water again squeeze it and repeat the process this process can be performed uh, in a time range of 10 to 15 minutes so cold sponging can help to reduce body temperature because there is heat loss through conduction when two bodies having different temperature patient's body have high temperature that cold piece of hanky as low temperature because it is dipped in cold water so when two bodies having different temperature comes in contact we keep it in forehead so it comes in contact then the body having higher heat loses its heat its heat towards the body having lower heat body having higher heat is the patient's body body having lower heat is the wet handkerchief next is linen and clothing of the patient should be changed daily and kept dry because of excess thermogenesis there is sweating in the body and if we we allow the patient to wear the same wet cloth sweaty cloth patient can suffer from next infection or another infection so linen and cloth of the patient should be kept dry and should be changed daily when the patient feels warm then excess blanket should be removed because there is excess thermogenesis when patient is feeling warm and if the patient is feeling cold blanket should be provided because if the patient is feeling cold patient is suffering from hypothermia so blanket should be provided according to the need patient should be provided with blanket or blanket should be removed this way we can manage the fever thank you so much we have next topic coming up so get ready for next topic also